thank you all for joining us. Absolute pleasure and delighted that you could join us today. Um, we continue our webinar series looking at, well, loads of different things and hopefully they're interesting topics. If there's any topics that you feel we should be covering, please let us know in the chat or please let us know by email. Happily to oblige, but we are pretty fully booked for the rest of this year. Uh, so what are we looking at today? Let's whiz through this bit of admin and get to uh, the main the main attraction, shall we? We're looking at something that, that I don't really know much about, to be fair, so it'll be really interesting. And that's uh, finite element analysis or FEA from here on in. It's importance within certification, but also just what is it and why do we use it and why is it important in general? Delighted to um, be joined by Dr. Morteza, and I knew I'd screw this name up, uh, Dr. Morteza Abutalibi, Abu sorry Morteza, I knew I'd do that, who's a, a principal engineer at the BBA. Okay, so let's do this admin part and get that out of the way. Again, apologies for the pronunciation, I'm terrible with names, that is disgraceful, I know. Okay, so if you haven't been to one of these webinars before, um, who are the BBA? Uh, if you have been, then please bear with me. But the BBA have been around for over 50 years, helping within the construction and manufacturing industries. And it's all about building confidence in the uh, solutions, services, the products that are created and implemented throughout the entire construction supply chain. The BBA looks to develop long term partnerships with its clients and associations for continued growth, not just in the UK, but in global markets, which is more important now than ever. It's important to note that we will always remain reassuringly impartial. The BBA are a for-profit organization, but limited by guarantee, which means we look to reinvest in the entire industry as a whole, for the benefit of all stakeholders, which includes you and me and everybody on this call and the wider construction community. So what do the BBA actually do? Well, we're probably mainly known for our agreement certification, but we do a whole bunch of other things, testing, audit and inspection, management uh, systems, um, and more recently, UK CA marking. So if any of those sound of interest or you feel we can help you in any of those fields, do let us know. Today, some big numbers on there, which I'll focus on, obviously. Um, we've issued over 6,000 certifications and we've done over a thousand annual inspections throughout the entire construction supply chain. There's a few of the numbers on there, some big, some small, but they're all important. The top right, probably one of the most important ones, which is our people. Again, stakeholders within the construction industry. So that's enough about the BBA. Moving on to today's subject and what we'll cover. Like I said at the start, um, we're going to cover what finite element analysis actually is, FEA, applying FEA, physical testing versus mathematical, mathematical modeling, approximate versus exact, and we'll look at FEA for the agreement certification, and finally, uh, a Q&A session. So if you have got any questions, please use the question functionality in this go-to webinar. We'll try to get round to answering all your questions at the end of this uh, webinar or this presentation. Um, but if we don't, I promise you, we will get back to you at some point in the near future. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Morteza, who will take you through FEA. Morteza, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh... Today, I'm going to talk about finite element method. I'll do my best to remain completely away from any mathematical complications. So I will present a very practical presentation rather than a theoretical presentation. In this discussion, the subjects are first physical testing versus mathematical modeling, approximate versus exact solutions to mathematical models, an introduction to the finite element analysis, and then we talk about applications of finite element method and how they are used in BBA testing and certification. So 
if you look here, uh, we have a finite element model at the right bottom of the screen. And this is representing a real life test. So as you see, finite element method is a very capable uh, method to deal with physical problems. When you want to quantify a physical property, the most uh, handy method is to test the physical object and quantify the physical properties. But as an alternative, you can use mathematical modeling, which is a description of the system using mathematical concepts and languages. You can use mathematical modeling in sciences such as physics, biology, earth science, and chemistry, or engineering such as computer science or civil engineering. But it goes beyond quantifying physical uh, properties. So it can be used in non-physical systems as well. For example, you can use it in social sciences, in economics, psychology, sociology, or political science. You can use it in musics, in linguistics, philosophy, or even in religion. So mathematical modeling is not limited to what I'm presenting right today. When you want to quantify a physical quantity, when you compare the mathematical modeling with physical testing, there are some advantages and some disadvantages for either of the two. For example, if you use mathematical modeling, it will consume less time, energy, and definitely cost. However, at the same time, mathematical modeling requires, requires simplifications, which brings in approximate solutions. And mathematical modeling is not possible all, for all problems. There are problems when you develop the mathematical modeling you will end up in unsolvable uh, equations. So physical testing might be the solution to some problems, but if there are alternative mathematical methods and mathematical models, they will bring in enormous advantages. I will elaborate this in next slides. So. Just as an example, we are going to uh, design a stiffened plate. Stiffened plates are used in different applications. They can be a slab for a building. They can be a platform for a ship or a vessel. They can be a platform in an aeroplane. You have different options to assess the structural performance of these stiffened plates, one of which is testing them. But consider the platform for a ship or a plane, how huge it is and how you can model it to test and how huge the rig should be and how many times you should repeat the test to get the right answers and how many times you should iterate the whole repetitions to optimize your design. So it will be enormous amount of time and energy consumed to get to the eventual answers. Another example are industrial ducts. These ducts can be as huge as six meters by six meters in cross section and very, very long ducts. So if we want to test these ducts, the rig should be really huge. 
they are subjected to internal pressures and suctions which causes vibration of the uh, of the duct if you want to test these with different thicknesses of the duct shell you have to build up several ducts with different thicknesses and test them several times to failure to understand the ultimate uh, structural performance of these ducts. But there are alternative mathematical solutions to this problem as well. So, for testing these ducts, sometimes they make a smaller models of them. These smaller models will approximation. They can't be as precise as a full-scale test. So you might tell me that there is no need to test everything full-scale, but I would answer that if you don't test them full-scale, then you will risk the precision of the results uh, taken from the test rig. Also, you might consider testing just a section of the whole uh, platform. So, for example, for a stiffened plate, just test a part of it. Although you have mathematical solutions to extrapolate the results to the full scale test, however, again, a factor of approximation will come into play. Again, you, hear, you, you can see a small size section of the duct which has been subjected to suctions and pressures consequently, and it has been tested very precisely to get the results. However, it is a small scale test and this accompanies complications for extrapolation to be precise. Instead of testing it, I would present this simplified mathematical representation. It includes all in-plane loads on that element. However, if, even if there are out-of-plane out loads imposed on the elements to be assessed, then we can consider those into the system and create the differential equations governing the motions and stresses. On this basis, without getting into complications of developing the differential equation, I have just presented the differential equation governing these plates. As you see, this differential equation is not very simple to solve. We have different methods to solve it in different scenarios, but it enables us to consider simplifications on the, on the product, on the system. For example, in the curves below, as you see, I have given you two results, one for linear theory and one for large deflection theory. It has enabled me, I mean, the differential equation has enabled me to give answers for different aspect ratios of the, uh, of the panel with different thicknesses, both for linear theory, which is only governing for small deformations, and for large deflection theory, which is for large deformations of the plate. On this basis, you can easily see that this equation enables me to represent the results of hundreds of tests very easily by just solving different equations. Okay, so the differential equation is not solvable in all scenarios 
for exact solutions. There are approximate solutions to differential equations. There are many methods such as power series or uh, trigonometric series or Galerkin method, many other methods that I've mentioned here. Some of these use iterations or iterative solutions to find the answers. Bear in mind that solving a problem using iterative methods is so sensitive to the number of iterations or the acceptance criteria for something called error. So errors should be minimized to get the most precise answer. But minimizing the error will increase the cost of calculations. So it should be, there should be a balance between the amount, the number of iterations and the cost of repeat, repeating them so that the errors are minimized economically. Practically, as you see here, there have been there has been an exact solution and there have been three different iterative solutions with different criteria. And based on the criteria, as you see, some solutions are closer to the exact solution than others. So what we should bear in mind in approximate solutions is to minimize the errors as much as possible. One of the methods to solve uh, differential equations is finite element method. In finite element method, the essence of the strategy is breaking the big problem into a smaller problems and solve each a small problem and then get the whole answers together and combine them to have a solution for the big problem. So, finite element method divides the system into a smaller and simpler parts, which are called finite elements. The process of breaking the, the system into finite elements is called meshing. And meshing is a very important part of finite element assessment. The reason for that is that the precision of the results will mainly depend on the meshing process. We should choose appropriate uh, elements and then choose appropriate sizes for those elements. Then finite element method will transfer the partial differential equation into a system of algebraic equations for each of the finite elements. These Algebraic equations will be combined all together to give us a large set of algebraic equations for the whole system. And then the whole system is solved to find the minimal error for the error function. An example here is showing you a river with a couple of sources of pollution. The pollution is introduced into the river at different times for the two sources of pollution. And the pollution starts spreading into the river, considering the stream to the right. So this problem has been solved using finite element method. Now let's move to next slides to see what these steps are then. First of all, Selecting the elements. The elements can be one-dimensional, two-dimensional, or three-dimensional. One-dimensional elements can represent rods or beams. They have two nodes, as you see on the right-hand side, and the two nodes are connecting, connected using a linear element. The elements can be two-dimensional, like uh, triangles or quadrilaterals and these elements have got three or four nodes and the nodes are connected together with a surface. 3D elements are solid elements which have more nodes. 
it is not essential that we keep these number of nodes. We can increase the number of nodes to increase the precision. So here I'm not talking about Gaussian points. I'm not talking about how the differential equation as a strong form is transformed into weak form and then solved as algebraic equations. I'm not going into any complications with finite element method. I'm just giving you a whole picture of finite element analysis. The elements can also be uh, no dimensional, such as the springs, masses, rigid links, etc. So we go quickly through the next three slides with one dimensional, two dimensional, and three dimensional elements where you can see the elements and how they would be appropriate. For example, here for one-dimensional elements, if you have a deep beam where shear plays a very big role, normal one-dimensional elements would not be appropriate. You should either use 3D elements to model deep beams or you should use specific one-dimensional elements which are capable of considering those shear deformations and shear stresses. Also, these elements are limited with the type of material and the material should be uh, identical throughout the cross-section of the element. As you see here, two-dimensional elements can be used to model surfaces. However, again, the material should not be changed through the thickness of the structure. If the thickness of the structure imposes change of material, then we should use 3D elements or multiple 2D layers. 3D elements would most of the time, not always, give us the most precise answers and they should be more uh, condensely meshed. But they give us more opportunities to model more complicated geometries. Here I'm uh, showing you the uh, degrees of freedom. So as you see, each node can travel in three directions and can rotate around three axes. The important thing is that not in all finite element analysis, you would require all these degrees of freedom. So you might restrain them or constrain them as you wish. The global uh, directions X, Y, and Z would be modified to have local directions as one, two, and three, and finite element method or finite element platform would automatically transfer the global directions to local directions and local coordinates to global coordinates as and when required. Here is the 3D model of the duct. So as you see, 3,500 millimeters by 3,500 millimeters, a huge duct. And this duct has been meshed. You see the meshing. You see the stiffeners. So it's a stiffened plate, just like the platform in a plane or a sheep. And this duct, has been subjected to internal pressures and suctions, and the results can be seen in the next slide. Finite element method is not only capable of giving us deformations, stresses, loads, it also is capable of giving us uh, natural frequencies, acoustic performances, thermal performances, fire performances, durabilities, and also you can do reverse engineering to find the properties of a structure uh, 
for which you know the responses in terms of deflections, accelerations, or stresses, and find the material properties as reverse engineering. Now, the applications of finite element method, and now I'm confining myself to construction industry. You can use finite element analysis in structural performances, fire performances, thermal performances, geometric problems, I'm sorry, ge geomechanical problems, reverse engineering, durability, hydraulic performances, acoustic performances, and many other aspects. But these eight are the main eight that the BBA would uh, assess in certification process. So, if you look at the next slide, you will see how the BBA considers the use of these uh, finite element analysis in certification process. The ones highlighted in yellow, the BBA receives the finite element model from the consultant or the certificate applicant, creates BBA's uh, models, either mathematical models in terms of finite element or testing or anything. If the results of the BBA assessment and the results from the certificate applicant would comply with each other, then we will accept the results and we will proceed with certification. The two highlighted in green would require a confirmation from a UCAS accredited laboratory. So if you provide us with a fire finite element model for, for example, uh, reaction to fire or resistance to fire of a system, then we should have a confirmation from a laboratory accredited by UCAS or equivalent to be able to accept them. Or if you give us the natural frequencies of a system in terms of acoustic performance, then we will require a letter from an accredited laboratory to accept those. So in a nutshell, finite element analysis is one of the mathematical modeling methods for assessing the physical or even non-physical quantities and quantifying them. It can be used in a wide variety of subjects, but mainly we focus in construction engineering in terms of BBA certification. Finite element method is a very capable tool to assess different aspects of performances of any system or product. The BBA accepts finite element analysis and models. We replicate it either by testing or by finite element models or other mathematical methods to find the answers. If the answers comply with each other, then we accept the models from external sources. For fire performances and acoustic performances specifically, we should have confirmation from UCAS accredited laboratories to be able to accept the models presented. If there are any questions, I am at your service. Uh, Mortez, thank you so much for that. Really, <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, some of it. I don't mind saying goes over my head a little bit when you start talking about mathematical equations, but that's that's just me. I'm sure it isn't the same for the audience. Uh, so if you've got any questions for the try audience, to minimize that. <laughs> yeah, no, I absolutely, I, I completely uh, see that, and like I, I followed it as much as I, I possibly could, and it's it, it really interesting. But a couple of questions that that sprung to mind, if you don't mind. The first one sure. is, um, what FE FEA platforms does the BBA accept and use? I can't disclose the FEA platforms that we use, but I can tell you about what FEA platforms we accept. We accept any platforms which are industrially approved. So even if a client develops a platform themselves and 
we can approve the platform, we will accept it. We have had scenarios of accepting finite element analysis for conservatory roofs, for example, by the clients who have their own in-house finite element uh, platforms and developed it themselves. We certified the platform, we approved the platform, so there is no limitations on the platforms used. It can be an, a wide industrial platform used over the planet, it can be a local platform only used in the UK, or it can even be a platform developed by the, the uh, users, uh, the applicants themselves. Okay, fantastic. That, that came from uh, John Hafford. Um, who was asking about if there's any limits that, that on the software uh, that we'd accept, but thank you for, for answering that. Um, I've got one more question uh, and then we'll wrap up because I know we were uh, slightly delayed as well. Um, what if test results contradict FEA? If a test result contradicts the FEA, unfortunately we have no other way to trust the test results. The reason for that is that the test result is a real representation of reality. The only thing that we would not accept the uh, test results and we rely, rely on the finite element method is when the test has got some obvious simplifications in it, which are evident that the test results are deviating from reality. So as long as the test results are acceptable, they would precede the finite element assessment. Okay, fantastic. Uh, that's that's the end of the, of the questions. Uh, just a, a couple there. Um, oh, I, actually, just just <laughs> just fi final question just popped in there. Just so happens I had the question uh, tab open. So, um, yeah, uh, Georgios, you were, it's from Georgios uh, Manos. He says he was just in time with his question. One hundred percent, he was. Uh, quite simply, uh, what is the accepted deviation percentage? There is no set uh, deviation acceptance criterion here. Uh, we should look at the results of our assessment and results of the client's assessment. Clearly, if the results of client's assessment are safer or more reliable than what we have, uh, more conservative than what we have achieved, then we will accept them with no questions. If the results are less uh, conservative, then we enter into a mutual investigation of the sources of error with the applicant, and eventually we will conclude if our model has not been accurate or if the client's model uh, is the source of error. Either way, a final decision will be mutually made. Fantastic, that's great. Um, Malteza, thank you so much for, for joining us. Really interesting, really, really insightful, and you, and you broke it down so even I could understand it, which, um, which is fantastic, uh, not just for me, but for everybody listening. So thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks all. Great stuff. So um, just, to, just to wrap up, Thanks everybody in the audience, thanks for your questions. Uh, thank you for joining us, absolute pleasure to provide this platform and, and this knowledge and, and insight for the whole industry. We'll continue to do so. Um, we've got one webinar each week this month, I think in October, a similar in November as well. So watch out for those. If you haven't signed up for our emails, please do so. Uh, go to the website and, and sign up for the newsletter and, and um, you'll receive them. Next week, we're looking at uh, an eco town and sustainability. So um, there's an eco town called Elmsbrook near Bicester, and it's been going for a few years and everything right from the start to now and uh, the people that live there. It's all about sustainability, sustainable living um, and the, 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 the products that they provide, um, the products and services that they use to build and everything like that will be covered, how they tested it, uh, what the outcomes to that was, and, and from planning to implementation. So it should be really exciting. So hopefully you can all join us for that. Once again, thank you so, so much uh, to the audience uh, for joining us. It is very much appreciated, and we hope to see you again very soon. So from Mateza and myself, 
BVA. Bye for now, and we will see you later.